Fellow Earthlings, welcome to the first part of the Waterloo campaign. This part's about events before the battles that ensued. We're in Europe. France was a monarchy. The country transformed through a series of revolutions into a republic. Napoleon came to power as Emperor of France. He was born on Corsica. He was a military genius, one of the best commanders by the age of only 16. He was promoted to second lieutenant, leading already an artillery platoon. Napoleon is defeated and to be exiled to Elba. He was talking to his generals. The army obeys me, said Napoleon. Sire, the army obeys its generals, said Ney. Ney, first loyal to Napoleon, switched sides because he wanted to maintain peace for France. King Louis XVIII claimed the throne. Born in Versailles, raised in the ways of the Ancien Régime, this will anger the French common people in the years to come. He was a good man though. Some sources depict him as lazy. This is due to gout, a joint infection, which gave him swollen feet. His boots wouldn't fit anymore. Unable to walk, he had to be carried or took a wheelchair. France is a monarchy. Once again, a status quo that most French see as a step backwards. He also downsized the French army. The king dismissed veteran leaders loyal to Napoleon. He replaced their positions with French royalists, consolidating his military prowess and thus securing the loyalty of the army. Louis the King, but for how long? A predator is lurking from the south and pounces. Napoleon returns from Elba to reclaim his position as French Emperor. Ney is sent to stop him. Ney, wanting to arrest Napoleon, saw that his soldiers and the people were hostile to the King and the Bourbons. He announced that he will join the Emperor and received cheers and applause from the populace and the soldiers. Ney goes home in our retirement. He would be summoned once again for the Waterloo campaign. Rebellion breaks out in the west and south of France. Mostly soldiers led by royalist leaders. The emperor and his troops dealt with it swiftly. Some troops defect to the Allied coalition, going to the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Wellington gathers valuable information via spies and defected French troops. Blucher, born in Rostock, current Germany also known as Marshal Fawatz. After the Battle of Leipzig in 1813, he got promoted to the rank of Field Marshal. He was the commander-in-chief of the Prussian troops. He had a determined go-getting character leading from the front. Wellington, born in Dublin, began at a very young age his military career rose to prominence in Indian campaigns. He commanded the British forces during the Spanish Peninsular War against the French. Master of maneuvers and good in defense, knew how to use an environment to his advantage. Meanwhile, at the Congress of Vienna, the Allies declare Napoleon an outlaw. It seemed likely that the French Republicans or Royalists would throw out Napoleon to avoid an invasion. The Congress ordered an immediate mobilization of the continent's armies. Almost 750,000 men were mustered for the Allied coalition. More than half a million men were marching towards France, their vanguards closing in on the French frontiers. General Württemberg and General Walmolden oversaw Russia's defense. King Charles II, General George and General Tauentzien led a Prussian home defense and acted as a second main reserve army for the Russians. General and Prince Hessen led a Danish reserve contingent.
General de Tolly acted as a main reserve force for Wellington and Blucher. The best peninsular troops were still returning from America. Every man that could be raised was sent in haste to Flanders. Even men from Ireland recruiting British cavalry was relatively easy, because serving the cavalry for a couple years was seen as an honorable thing and gave certain prestige. Wellington's force consisted of a third British, Irish and Scottish units, a third troops from German states and a third Dutch-Belgian troops. Wellington and Blucher's armies were ready in June. Blucher was stationed more in the south of current Belgium. General von Hake guarded positions more south. Archduke Joseph, last member of the House of Este, and General Schwarzenberg led an army almost as big as the armies of Wellington and Blucher combined. General Bachmann and General Fremont would be ready to strike France in July. General von Bianchi, stationed at current Italy, led an Austrian-Italian contingent into France. A small amphibious assault under Admiral Pillow was planned. General Lowe would lead the landing force. General Castanos, General Blake and General O'Donnell would lead the Spanish assault. General Lecor and General da Silveira would join the offensive. A simultaneous attack along all French borders was planned for July. By then, all Allied forces would be ready to strike. The Emperor needs time. He needs to restore his political influence and raise large funds for upcoming campaigns. The country was stabilizing. He needs to choose a defensive or offensive strategy. He is mustering troops. He mobilized 250,000 men in two months, mostly new recruits. He appointed his commanders. The Emperor recalled Ney from his retirement. Napoleon divided his Grand Armée into two sections an observation corps to guard the nation from external threats and other corps that would go on the offensive with him. First corps under General Derlan and General Payol. Second corps under General Rey and General Exelman. Third corps under General Van Damme and General Kellerman. Fourth corps under General Gerard and General Milho. Fifth corps under General Rapp and General Rottenburg. Sixth corps under General Mouton and General Test, and a reserve corps under General Grouchy and General Hulot, and the Iron Marshal Davout, the most capable commander of all, who never lost a battle, was appointed Minister of War and wouldn't partake in the Waterloo campaign. What are your thoughts on this? There were young guard recruits who were stationed under Cherbourg to surmount internal insurrections. Enemies were closing in. General Rapp oversaw the defense near Strasbourg. General Le Courbe, based at Belfort, oversaw the defense there. General Suchet defends Lyon. General Brun defends Toulon from the Austrians and repressed internal rebellions in the south. General de Caen and General Clausel oversaw the Spanish frontiers. France's defense was stretched so thin they would soon be overwhelmed by the Allies if the status quo remained. <laughs> 